I wanted to talk about my mock vine scrapes that I created many years ago. I know that thousands of people, tens of thousands of follow these practices online. And, uh, and I appreciate that. It's pretty cool to see how well this is taken off, how many people follow it now. And um, even some of the bigger channels that are, are picking up on my mock vine scrape that I created many years ago. So I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate you uh, sharing that. And it's, I like these. I st install them at every stand location because they work. You know, back in the day, I saw people using ropes and T posts, cedar posts, attaching those ropes. And, uh, and I saw them being used lightly. And I thought, you know, the number one scrape that I've seen, whether it's been hunting or actually out in the woods scouting, scouting client properties for a living, is a vine scrape. And I thought, how can I take that and mimic it? And so in this case, we've tied some parachute cord up to a limb up above. And this is one way we do that, where we take a three quarter inch to one inch vine, usually about waist to belly high. And I'm using at least a six, seven foot piece. When the, when the branch or rope, we tie rope between two trees, is higher than we're using a larger vine. In this case, it's a pretty windy spot. Not a real big diameter tree right here, this cherry. And so it blows around a little bit. I don't want to set off the camera over there. I'm putting one of these at every stand location, no more, no less. I don't want a lot of scrapes in a given location because I want the deer to all leave their scent on this branch. I want to use no scent. I add no scent to this. I want bucks to come in here and hit this, leave their scent. I want fawns to come here, leave their scent. Does to come here and leave their scent. Young bucks, old bucks. How do they leave their scent? They take their preorbital glands around their eyes and nose and they rub them on this end right here. Folks, that's the best scent. You can't add something else to that to make it a better scent to your mock scrape. In fact, you just cover up potentially dozens of deer that other deer can smell on this licking branch and before you think their nose isn't powerful enough to do that, think about a beagle. When a rabbit runs out, takes a right, beagle hits that track, immediately knows to go that way, unless it's not a very good beagle. It's doing that by simply smelling it. Deer go by a bread baker, we smell bread, they smell the ingredients. They smell approximately which ingredient is stronger than the other. That's the power of their noses. We can't even comprehend. They can smell a fingerprint on a camera. Not 10 feet away, but they can go up to it and smell your fingerprint on that camera. Their nose is so much different than ours. So when they each leave, their pre orbital glad scent on there that's a signature of themselves. All those deer can smell it. Pretty cool. I want an area, this is the most level area we had out here, right here. So I want that scrape to hang above a level area. I want right in the middle of a trail. This happens to be a small hunting plot. The main trail is right behind Gunner, right there as those deer are coming out here. So we have this main trail that gets beat down coming in and out right here. See the stand location behind me. We have a stand location right up in the tree. That's where I killed Kermit two years ago. In fact, Kermit was standing right behind Gunner, right back there. I have a trail camera right here. And what's cool about this trail camera is we had a really good spot for it. Of course, six, seven feet in the air. It's angled down at the mock scrape. Also on a tree wider than the camera. And at the same time, we have a low glow camera, so you can't see it. And then this profile is hidden because we have this side branch that was coming out right here that we cut off for more uh, shooting lane out of that stand. So as far as the setup goes, we always pick a tree, always pick a mock scrape, always pick a stand location. Those three go together. You want a mock scrape branch or vine. We'll use jack pines up north, aspen branches, hemlock, even soft maple at times, oak. But you're looking for what do the deer actually use for rubbing in your area and that makes a good licking branch. We want it three quarters of an inch to an inch because we found over the decades that a branch that is inch and a half, two inches or greater they avoid using. I think it's too intimidating. It's, it's not natural to them. At the same time, a branch or a vine that's a half inch or less in diameter, they break often. We want one. We don't want a row of these. People use rows in the past, and I've always been a fan of one because I want this one licking branch to collect all the deer scent in the area. You can see I've touched this in cutting it. We just cut it out of the woods right over here. This is against my back when I was ripping out the ground right down here. It doesn't really matter because the deer will use this that scent to go away, and then their scent accumulates. Sometimes we rough this up at the end, but I don't think it's necessary. Sometimes I pee in the scrape myself. I don't think it's necessary. We're not gonna do that right now. I just simply have, don't have to go pee. 
So that kind of determines whether we do that or not. Again, this is six to seven feet. I don't like, you can imagine if I had a piece this big and it's hanging from all the way up there, it's gonna blow all over in the wind. I want something a little bit larger to anchor it down. And in the case of this right here, we're about 15 feet away from this scrape with our camera set up. And I would go closer eight feet but if you're close on a vine that tends to move around a little bit your camera is going to pick it up a little bit more no matter what camera you have we're obviously facing this camera to the north here so that we're not getting the midday sun shining right down on our camera or the rising sun in the morning the sun's setting behind me over here so we're not getting that shining right in the camera i like a spot like this because it's on that trail we expect to shoot deer on that relates to a trail that's on the inside here too. So perfect spot for them to tee and come in here or shoot them on the inside. But then also we have this set up so we can see every deer that's back to that opening going out to the main plot and then out to the ag fields finally after dark. So we can see a lot going on just from the spot. We have a great bow stand right there. And this relates to a gun stand we have down the end about 200 yards away where deer can pop out of that opening after they hit here and they're right in front of you of our gun. I hope that makes sense. These are very simple. People try to overcomplicate this. This is something that I've been teaching and using for many years. My mock vine scrape. I hope you've tried it, it's a lot of fun. It's not a dangerous thing to put out, it's cheap. I would estimate this roll was 100 feet of parachute cord. That 100 feet of parachute cord was $9. We probably used about six, eight feet on this and that's literally the only expense we have other than using a saw to cut it, handheld held tools, like used a knife to cut the rope. But as far as the scrape, that's it. About 50, 60, 70 cents at the most and you guys could have a mock scrape. Again, more on a flat surface if you can do that. Right in the middle of a trail coming out or on the trail itself, right within bow shot of a stand location. Also pick your camera tree when you're setting that up. And I'll add something about this one in particular. Is if you look up there to the branch, that branch has no leaves on it. We took all the branches with leaves on it because they just simply blow around in the wind and they blow that branch, make it move a lot more. So I didn't want those leaves on that branch. Also, if that branch is hanging out, keeps blowing a lot more. So we cut that off so it's a nice stubby stick up there. It's very sturdy, it's fresh. We actually left about two feet of extra rope up there in case we need to retie in the future. But normally you put a scrape in like this, this vine right here at about one inch in diameter, fresh. This should last for five, six, seven or seven years. Sometimes they get broke with rural aggressive buck, but most of the time the bucks actually move their head out of the way when they walk by after they left their scent. I look at it as they left that, it's sacred. They don't want to destroy that scent in there. So again, this is something I created a long time ago. I love sharing it with you. I love seeing people use it all over the internet and social media, YouTube channels. I appreciate you doing so. And at the same time, these are really effective. That's why they've taken off and there's tens of thousands of people, if not more, using them. It creates a great spot for your trail camera right in front of your stand. And when they come in and focus on this, they're not focusing at that camera or me up in the tree right there. So great combination for everything. So make sure to try these this year. Again, no scent needed. Follow these directions and steps. Literally, we've set hundreds of these. I've seen tens of thousands of mock scrapes. You can imagine, I've seen 500 rope scrapes off T-square cedar posts on one 200 acre property alone. After watching all these scrapes, I have an idea of what works the best and what applies anywhere. You might need to change the branch, the type of vine you have. Make sure there's no leaves of three coming off the vine. That's poison ivy. But bottom line is awesome addition to your hunt for this fall. A lot of fun to share online, see the bucks that come through. Great for an inventory of what bucks are in the area. Try them out, you'll love them. I like creating a lot of videos about this. We have over 50 online. Almost every video we have shows B-roll bucks coming in. And I'd be willing to bet within a few days there'll be a buck working this mock scrape, me touching the bottom of it or not, doesn't really matter. I see people using gloves to put these out, it's kind of silly. Um, of course, putting scent on, they don't need that as scent. Some people say, well, I use scent just to get it going. You don't need to get it going like that. They'll come out, they see it. We have bucks that come from 20 yards away. You see this right here. We've never gotten a picture of them, video of them, and they come right to it and uh, get the picture or video taken. So we'll try to show this. I, I want to put this out pretty soon. But I'll probably put it out in about a week so that we can show you some uh, pictures of deer coming in and hitting this. And this is a, this is a blank uh, food plot right now. We don't have any food growing in here. 
We have no attraction other than the ag fields that are everywhere around here. So we're hoping to get something coming through here. I don't expect a lot of use on this until mid-summer to mid-October when our mature bucks come back from their summer haunts around the neighborhood for them to set up shop here in the fall. When they do, this mock scrape we will be waiting for them. Folks, I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.